in general there are two kinds of graphic formats that we usually deal with one is called as the svg format in which like it is uh, called scalar, uh, scalable vector graphics and other is the raster format so most probably you are familiar with the raster format in uh, which is like uh, jpg png or gif or tiff images these are in raster format what it means basically there are some pixels so the image is in particular size of like uh, 1000 by 500 pixels so each pixel has a color property which it defines and the whole lot of pixels will define a picture so that's a raster image and in a vector image the image is defined mathematically so it's it's uh, like it's connection between two points which is defined mathematically so that's a vector image okay so i would like uh, like you to open a application called as inkscape okay the icon is like a mountain with a snow cap and you should get a window like this when you open inkscape so this is one of the very powerful applications and my favorite application in i've been playing with it for some time now and uh, it has lot of tools and it can do very good graphic works okay so so how many of you have your visiting cards let me ask you this question how many of you have visiting cards okay so did you design the card yourself you design the card yourself okay so you also design the card yourself and what all information does a visiting card contain it has your name your contact number email address or uh, if it is a business card for example if it is for promoting certain business it will tell you what kind of services you offer in that business so in this task we'll first make a visiting card for yourself okay so this is first task for the students also okay so this is a a4 page size and visiting cards are not this big right so what i would like you to do is go to file and click on new okay so there is a lot of options of different page sizes here there is cd cover dvd cover and there is business card also okay so choose a business card from there it will open in another window and just maximize it business card size in case it is appearing too big so for zooming into any document you can use the plus key on your keyboard and zooming out you can use the minus key so now we'll add some text into it so on this toolbar there is a a written over here right okay so if you take your mouse it will show some help about that tool so this will be true for all the tools that are listed on this side so this one says create and edit text objects so i just click on it so and what will happen is my cursor changes now you see initially it was just a pointer now it is a crossbar with a a so that means the text tool has been selected okay now i click with this and it will give me a cursor now so that means that it is ready for typing ready for taking an input okay so i'll type my name here and then when i want to come out of it i can either click here so this top on the top there is a arrow so this is the select and transform tool okay so you can click on this and you will come out of this thing so a text will be created on the page i'll put my email also here okay so right now this is out of my page this is not on my page right if i want to move it so i go to the select tool again and i click on this okay so immediately you see the cursor again changes there is a hand there which is, which will enable us to move it so then i drag it so that i can place it wherever i want okay so everybody is now ready to add text right so now we'll see how do, how do we change the font so everybody knows what fonts are so in this there is a option of text in the menu it says text and font okay so once you press this you will get a window like this and on the all the fonts are listed here okay if you press on this it will show the font with a preview unless you apply here the font won't change okay so let's say i'll choose some font we'll choose this one okay and from from this tool also you can change the absolute font size i can change it let's say to 20 or something so now you know how to add fonts and how to change the fonts and also to move around them in the document now let's say if i want to color it how do i color it so i just select this and you see there is a color palette downstairs i mean here is a whole lot of colors these are not the only colors you can drag this thing 
And you see there are quite a lot of many colors than there are initially visible. If I click on this, you'll see that the immediately text color changes. This is clear how to change color for the text. Is everybody okay with this? So since you have picked up very fast, we'll immediately go to the next thing. So let's say you want to add a background color to this page. This is right now white. There is nothing here really. Okay. So there is this tool which is fifth in the row. It's called create rectangles and squares. Okay, so I click on this. I'll just drag it like this. Okay. So I create a rectangle of approximately same size as the page. What, is, what has happened now is the rectangle is on the top of the text that we have put. We want to put the rect rectangle behind the text. Okay. So use the page down key. It will put the rectangle back. Right now the uh, Amit is not visible because like the color of Amit and color of this rectangle is same. Okay. So I'll just change that to something lighter and we will see. Okay. So the color is changed now. All the objects that are possible. There are two possible colors. Okay. So one is called as the fill color and one is called as the stroke color. Okay. So this yellow thing that you see here is the fill color and this is a stroke color. So I can remove the stroke color. So I can only have a border here. Okay. So you can see, you can make objects just with a border. There is no inside color there. Or you can have objects which have no border, but just a in the inner filling. Okay. So you can have different colors for this or you can have same colors also. So let's say you want to add a border. The first option in the object is fill and stroke. And the shortcut is control shift F if you want to know. So there are two options. So fill option is there. So you can see the fill color is yellow color. I have chosen the wheel option. And the wheel option is interesting because I can see live color changes here as I change the wheel. Okay. So I can choose any color that I want. I can see fit. And uh, similarly with stroke, so this cross here denotes that you don't want any fill. And there is next option is gradient. Okay, linear gradient. So how many of you know what a gradient is? Can you explain uh, what a gradient is? Like at least in terms of graphical representation, we define a gradient as something who, uh, for, for whose density value okay. decreases uh, a ramp or a slope. Okay, a slope be... is an example. Or let's say uh, a temperature gradient can be there. And as you go out of this room, I mean, temperature will gradually increase. I mean, if this door was not closed, I mean, it would have been the case. So we have selected gradient right now here. So you have a slight gradation of color going from orange to white. Okay, so this is another option for fill, fill color. So let us see what, what else it has. Then there is a circular gradient also or radial gradient. So if you give it, so this is something that you see. So this is useful more for circular objects or like objects which have like arcs and all that. It's much better used with that. And uh, finally, we have a pattern. Okay, so you can have different patterns here. So let's say if I want a checkerboard here, I can use checkerboard also, but uh, this may not be useful for a visiting card. So what I'll do is I'll stick with my flat color. Okay. There are very similar options for stroke paint as the fill paint, and you can change the color using that. And there is also something called a stroke style. Okay. So there, that's another option. And then you can have different types of strokes. So you can have dotted lines or solid line. Okay. So this is about stroke and in stroke also you can have gradients like this. Okay, now I'll give you a task, create a circle with red as the fill color and blue as the stroke color. No, this will like a slope like this. This is zero right now, so it's not fun. Now if I select on this, you'll have something called as width and height, W and H here. Okay. Now this is not a perfect circle, right? If I want a perfect circle, what do I do? So I can go to this W and H and I can change this manually. Let's say I put it at 50 and I hide for height also, I put it at 50 and then I lock it. Okay. So there is a lock there. So if I lock this, what happens? The aspect ratio doesn't change. So this will be very useful to you when you are dealing with complex objects or even uh, fonts or something like that. So now what happens is if I change any of the height or width value, let's say I put it at 35, 
This value also changes by 35. If it, is what, it, if it was not locked, then it won't change by 35. It will stay what it is. OK, so it will depend on what object you choose. OK, so everybody is OK with this, this much. So should we see some other tools also? OK, so there is a tool like Pentagon and a star is given here. It says create stars and polygons. OK, so with this you can create some stars. So by default, you will get five corners to a star. OK, if you want to increase the corners, there is an option called corners. You just increase them. OK, and instead of a star, if you want a polygon, you just change this and you'll get a polygon. So all types of polygons are possible. Students like this tool very much. I mean, when, when they first start using Inkscape, they'll decorate their pages or like their documents with a lot of stars. OK, so this is something that I've observed across uh, colleges. And perhaps in your college also, you'll observe this. OK, then there is another tool called a spiral tool. So as, as it says, it creates some spirals. OK, so it will create spirals. And you can also change some properties of the spirals. It is here, no? It's got transparency 0% here. Stop. Ah, your opacity should be always 100%. OK, so some of you might face this problem. You draw the object, but the object is not visible. OK, so I'll just try to address this issue. OK, so in the stroke and fill option, there are two, two more things. There is something called as A. So this is the alpha channel. So what does this alpha channel do? Is Let's say this is by default at 255. If I reduce it, you'll see it is becoming more and more transparent. So it may happen that sometime this, this might be at 0 or this might be very low. So you won't be able to see the object. OK. And there is another option called as opacity. OK. So this again produces the same effect. So in case you don't see any object, if you draw it, just see if these values are 0 or like very close to 0. This is, this is like a pitfall. I mean, you, you might end up, sometime it, uh, you might change it accidentally and you don't know this. But this might happen with you. And it has happened with some of you. Then there is something called as a pen tool. OK. So with this, you can draw straight lines with which you can connect different objects. And you can create shapes also. So this, this is very useful when you're uh, doing some things. Then there is another very interesting tool, so something called as calligraphy tool. So it can create calligraphic <laughs> shapes for you. So you can set the angle of the brush and all that. So has anybody done calligraphy? I mean, you've done calligraphy. You also have done. OK, so you can actually set the pen size and pen type in this. All the options are there. And you can really draw some very good calligraphic images using this. OK, so this is the basic tools. OK, I'll show you just one more tool. Uh, this is called the spray tool. OK, so let's say I select this star. And I want a lot of these stars to appear all over screen randomly. I mean, I don't want any order in them. I just want them to appear randomly. So I just click on this spray tool. And I just click with this. So any object that you, that you have selected will get sprayed with the spray tool. So let's say this page size and this, this size is not matching. So if I want to align it exactly to the page, what do I do? So first of all, uh, on the right hand corner, there are two options here. One is this thing, and one is a grid kind of thing. And there is a page, page option above here. So I'll click on this page option. So it says snap to the page border. OK, so what it will do is any object that you take near the page border, it will just snap it to it. It will attach to it. So we'll see how this works. So I move this here, and I just leave it. And OK, so it attaches there. And then you just reduce this size. This, so this is like a, more like a crude way of doing it. So if you really want to do it in an absolute way, go to the document properties. So the key for this is Control shift d So here you see the exact size of the document. So this is 85 by 54 millimeters. OK, so once you know this size, you can actually put this size here. OK, so this is how you make it if you want to change exact, exact dimensions of this thing. So let us finish the visiting card first, and then we'll go on to the next task. Hmm? Looking what? Great.
कैन पब्लिश बुक्स ऑल्सो यूजिंग दिस हाँ बोली ये ओपेसिटी जो है ना उसका ट्रांसपेरेंसी जीरो पे सेट हो गया है स्ट्रॉक का हाँ नहीं तो उसका एस्पेक्ट रेशो चला जाएगा सी वेन एज एन आर्टिस्ट वेन यू आर वर्किंग ऑन ईच ऑब्जेक्ट यू हैव टू डू ऑल द वर्क सो दो यूर कैनवास इज जस्ट अ विजिटिंग कार्ड यू मे वॉन्ट टू वर्क नाउ ओनली ऑन योर नेम सो लेट्स जस्ट वर्क ऑन द नेम वॉट्स योर नेम स्पेल ए आर यू एन अरुण आई कैन ओनली यूज आउटलाइन फॉर द नेम एंड मेक श्योर दैट देर इज नो फिल फॉर इट सी एज अमित सेट समाइम अगो एवरी ऑब्जेक्ट इन इंकस्केप हैज टू प्रॉपर्टीज वन इज आउटलाइन दट इज स्ट्रोक एंड देन द फिल नाउ इवन द लेटर्स दट यू टाइप ऑल्सो हैव एन आउटलाइन एज वेल एज ए फिल could we give outline to arun and then eliminate uh, the fill color and secondly sometimes what happens is artists don't like the computer kind of things because every letter looks very similar so what i will do and that can i will convert this entire thing into a path path would mean that each of these letters can be actually converted into a path so can you convert this into a path so i go to object path object to path so now instead of a font i mean this is this has become a inkscape object i mean like you have rectangles and other things In, initially it was a font this is no longer a text now this is just some shape uh, it is available for lot of manipulation now maybe what you can do is you can select okay now you can you see there are a lot of dots at every place so like i can actually now change the letters like this a little bit so let's say i would want this a little top like this and this one as well now see so this is what uh, graphic artists do uh, how many of you actually worked with uh, something like uh, corel draw or uh, illustrator okay so if you have known that you would know this as well because the the tools and the sets and everything is an exactly same however there is one major difference and the major difference is if you save an object in corel draw what is the file extension which is proprietary bad this one is more advanced than postscript this is called svg so if you save this file it will be saved as svg okay now what we can do is why don't you save this file only that visiting card part of it and then load it on a firefox and see what happens so all your drawings that you make on inkscape are directly uploaded on studio dot this uh, started which means that these are ready for the web one major difference between an svg file and this one is something like this you know you can actually go on increasing its size the size it will not pixelate unlike a picture if you have a picture and you keep on increasing its size what happens that's called pixelation but you won't happen to have that kind of uh, thing when you work with svg so one other thing that you could possibly do is to visit uh, inkscape gallery and before you visit the inkscape gallery who is going to teach you the rest of the inkscape the inkscape can teach you the rest of the inkscape it will give you a tutorial which is done using the inkscape itself inkscape basics all that you have to do is just follow that thing and you can edit that file itself tutorial helps you to do some changes while you're reading don't worry it's it's like a sandbox so you can keep selecting objects make them big small and all that all the operations that you're doing and you'll be able to become a master of inkscape mm -hmm.